Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sports Talk for You. Of course, I'm the host, Aaron Bell. I have my co-hosts, Armand Ely, Adam Parker, and Chase Gibson joining us today. Nice to have you, Chase. We are honored to have a special guest. His name is Dakota Backus. He pitches for the Washington Nationals AAA team. Welcome, Dakota. What's going on? Nothing Thanks for having me. Yep. Go ahead and explain about how you guys are dealing with this AAA, with you know not being able to play and not being able to get paid right now and all that stuff. Um, well, on the plus side, there's a little bit of compensation, which is nice. Um, but in the meantime, it's kind of like a standstill. It's kind of like a bridge that they just decided to stop working on. So <laughs> they're like, we're just going to see what happens. Um, they talked about, they talked about like May, May 31st, possibly being, um, where they start to make a decision if the season is going to start or not for us. Uh, the way it looks is nothing. So yeah, I think they're talking <laughs> mid year starting yeah, the kind of league and triple A stadiums. Just told us to go home. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that um, they keep out of our ears because the more we think about it, then, um, you know, the more we're going to start asking questions, the union's going to start getting more involved. So uh, we kind of just let our agents do everything for us. And then, uh, for example, like uh, the pitching coordinator of the Washington Nationals called me today, just a little heads up, like, hey, you know, how are you feeling? How's your family? Um, stuff like that. But in all honesty, a lot of the people that call agents, uh, coordinators, managers, whomever, they just care about your well-being. You know, like, baseball's baseball. Like, it's, it's going to come back around, and we're going to end up playing one day. But, like, right now, it's, hey, man, like, are you doing all right? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. So, I think that's safe. the main thing. Yeah, no, right. definitely. Hey, Dakota, my question for you. Uh, I know you play for the Washington Nationals. Is it the AAA team? Uh, yeah. So, this will be my eighth year with them. Um, it'll be my ninth year of professional baseball. Though I was actually drafted by the Oakland Athletics in 2012. Can you talk about what it's like to uh, having some of these mentors like Strasburg and uh, some of those pitchers that have kind of groomed you, kind of gave you some advice? What kind of advice do they give you? Um, okay, so me, I'm not a big questions guy. I like to just – I almost like sit back and observe, you know, I uh, just learn from what they're doing kind of um, as I've played over the course, I say the last like four or five years, I've actually gotten to the point where, you know, I want to learn, I want to actually learn how to pitch. I don't want to just be, I just don't want to throw the baseball anymore. So like I, I learned, you know, like how the body moves, biomechanics, stuff like that. But guys like guys like those guys like Strauss, guys like Scherzer. Uh, this was my first time being around them in spring training, and uh, I just kind of sat back and like watched what they did because they, they're they're doing their own thing. Um, they're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? So I, I'm not a big questions guy, but I get the gist of you know like. If he's if he's talking to someone else, what is he working on? You know, I'll sit back in the back pocket, kind of like creep over. But <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. I mean, I'm not gonna go over there and say anything. But um, I have just <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I have a question. Who inspired you to want to become a pitcher, and do you model your technique after anybody? Um. No, uh, so something I've learned, and this is very cliche, I promise, and I'm going to try not to be as, as much as possible, but um, we all are actually our own individual as a pitcher. I mean, like I said, it's pretty cliche. Um, so I don't necessarily look at one person and I'm like, man, I've got to be like that because, you know, I don't throw 100. You know, 93, 95 is pretty average now. But, um, no, I mean, there's not one person that I'm just like, you know, I got to be just like him. But 
I think the turning point in my career that made me want to um, turn into a pitcher rather than a thrower was 2016. 2016 had a really, really bad year. And uh, the writing on the wall for me was this is about your fourth year of pro ball. And the average lifespan is what, two, two and a half, maybe? Yeah. Um, especially in the minor leagues. So for me, and I wasn't throwing very hard, it was how can I maximize as myself to buy myself some time? Because that's all it is at this point with uh, guys like me playing eight, nine years. It's how long can you stick around under someone's radar until they're willing to give you a shot? Mm -hmm. So that was like the, that was a pivoting point for me. <clears throat> yeah. That's cool. All right. Hey, I had another question, Dakota. Uh, so you talked about, you know, you talked about um, the union and things like that during this time. Uh, mm -hmm. Who provides employee benefits for you guys and do former players continue to receive health insurance as well? Um, I mean, the players union. So uh, again, like this spring training was like my first time in big week camp and uh, being able to be around those guys and go through their process of learning how the players union kind of works. And uh, it was kind of cool to see. So when we had our union meeting, uh, we were also paired up with the Cardinals. And so to watch Zimmerman, Scherzer, Wainwright on the other side, um, who else is over there now? Uh, anyways, the guys like that, they, they're the voice of not just the major leagues, but they're the voice of the minor leagues too. And that's, those are the guys that are actually going to take care of us. You know, uh, we, we were told, you know, you'll get X amount of dollars a week for, you know, a few weeks. And then the players association will step in, kind of help the guys out that need it. Um, but like, I mean, like those, like being in that meeting and just listening to Wainwright and Scherzer back and forth. I was like, man, this is uh, <laughs> this no, kind of a dream come true, to be honest, man. Like, yeah. yeah, listen to those guys take care of uh, not just themselves, but everyone else around them. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so I have uh, one question I want to ask is, because you've been in the minors for, what, eight years now, you said? This would be my ninth year, yeah. I've seen a lot of guys that have you know, been in the minors trying to work their way up to the pros for nine, ten years, and then they finally just give up and hang up their cleats. Are you mm -hmm. still just pushing as hard as you can? Could you just to at least try to get there one year up to the Washington uh, Nationals? Yeah, and that's the thing. Thought about giving up? I haven't yet. So, and I'm sure not just baseball itself, but obviously it – sport you play um you just know like you just you can feel the you can just feel it and you know you can see the writing on the wall of this is this is probably it so i haven't gotten to that point yet and i haven't gotten the vibe from the organization or uh any teammate coach coordinator anything like that um because and again this is I'm not to toot my own horn, but since 2016, when I had that really bad year, I had to, like I said, I had to do something and I had to change whatever I was doing in the past to make myself buy myself some time. So, you know, you see, you hear all these programs, driveline, top velocity, uh, like all this stuff. Um, so, I mean, I tapped into that just a little bit. And then 2017, I came out and had a really good year. 18 had an even better year. Um, this past year, I ended up, you know, it's my first full season in the uh, PCL, which is the worst place to ever play as a pitcher. The ball absolutely flies. <laughs> so, um, and again, it was, it, I don't know if there's someone upstairs that's just like, hey, man, keep pushing. You're, you're going to make it because, you know, again, 19, it was an even better year. Ended up being a AAA All Star. Um, so yeah, it's it's crazy how everything starts to unfold for me. Anyways, 
mean, as I just turned 29, like four days ago. So. <laughs> yeah. Explain to our fans, what is minor league baseball life like compared to someone who's been in the major leagues? What is, what is minor league life like? Oh, my goodness. How much time do we have? Oh, we can't wait <laughs> time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, it is exactly what people talk about. It's a grind. Um, paycheck is very less than working at McDonald's. But it's not, obviously, it's not about that. Um, People are always like, well, at least you're not working a desk job. And it's like, well, you're nine to five. So I'm a lot better than mine sometimes when it comes financially. But, oh, man, long bus rides, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Food is not the best. <laughs> um, there's a lot of times, there's a lot of times at the end of the year, you're like, I think I just paid – to play baseball for the last six months. Right. I actually don't think I made any money. But right. um, the guys that – I think the guys like me that have had to go through that grind, we respect the big leagues that much more when you actually get there. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, this is my first spring – my first big league spring training. Uh, this past year is my first year, first full season in AAA. Um, I've been a double-A grinder for four years. Uh, it's a huge step. You know, you got guys that take your bags for you. It's like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, it, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, it's, it's remarkable. Um, I think the guys, there's, there's some guys in the big leagues that might take advantage of it. But then again, those are the guys that have been told that you're going to be a first round draft pick ever since they were 16. So they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. Now, did I? It's a grind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did, I, yeah but... did I see right that you pitched your college ball at Indiana State? Yeah, so I went to junior college for two years, and then I went to Indiana State for one year, 2011, 2012. Was that, did you guys come out to X yeah. Stadium that year? Which Wichita State go to your guys' place? Uh, they came to us. Did they? Okay. And we won 5-2 to two Friday. And then Saturday, I think we won six to eight. And then Sunday, I think we got whooped. So, <laughs> Very impressed that you remember those scores. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it was it was just one of those things that. Uh, so coming from junior college and then going to Division One, it's you don't really have that that like home and moderate that that connection to that school like uh, someone that started out there as a freshman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so anyways, you know, you hear all these rumors how Wichita is a big uh, – when it comes to baseball, they're huge rivals with Indiana State. Like, I don't – I didn't know anything about it. I didn't really care. But the second that they got off the bus and they got – they started walking through right field, I was like, holy smokes. Like, you can just <laughs> feel the tension. And I, I'm, I'm like, where did this come from? So – and the other, another reason I remember that is uh, – the manager, also the third base coach, I think, kind Jeez. of, kind of, kind of crazy, kind of a lunatic. And uh, <laughs> I do remember their shortstop almost starting a fight with our third baseman in the middle of oh, an inning. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of things that happened that made me remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Following hey, Wichita State baseball, any any state Wichita State has been quite a, a rivalry when they were in the Valley Conference. There, there's some stories. Mm -hmm. That, that that goes on, mm -hmm. and that's the and thing. It, I knew I knew nothing about it before I got there. But the second they got off the bus, it was just, whoa! Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> now you at Indiana State, you were 2012 Missouri Valley Newcomer of the Year. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that experience. It's it, pretty cool. I had, um. Like I said, like you don't have that that connection to the school like you do as if if you went there uh, your freshman year. Um, but the cool part was I didn't I didn't even know that award existed. <laughs> um, I just I just went out and pitched every Friday and I basically just did what I was told. And um, right. you know things panned out to where that happened. I was like, dang, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, but it was a it was a good year though. Like we ended up winning. Shoot, I don't know, 40, 48, 50 games. Mm -hmm. And uh, ended up going to a regional, um, things I, again, never really a part of. 
uh, but it's it the reason I, I you know I say don't I had that connection is I didn't really know what I was doing when I was playing baseball even in high school you know I didn't make my sophomore year my sophomore year team because I was terrible. I was trash. <laughs> and then, uh, um, you know, I happened to get a shot junior year. I maybe pitched like 10 innings. Senior year, same thing. I just happened to throw a little harder. But it was never one of those things that I always saw myself doing, like, okay, I'm going to go to junior college or I'm going to go to Division One, or I'm going to go get drafted or whatever. So I just kind of, like I said, I kept my head down and things just happened. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, you got drafted your junior year, correct? Yeah. Now, explain to people how big of a decision is it to want to come back for your senior year, but then you see that paycheck as a 20, 21-year-old, you're like, okay, I want to go try this out. Explain to people how big those decisions are and why you made your decision. Um, man. Uh, okay, so – Obviously, money is what pushed me out of school. That signing that ninth round paycheck, whatever it was, that signing bonus, I was like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> but um, it's it honestly is a huge decision, uh, just because there's there's one thing that no one can ever take away from you, and it's your degree. That's that's a fact. No one can ever take that away from you. Baseball, they can take away from you. Um, so it's a matter of what do you what do you feel is a bigger impact on your life? Is it at that moment, is it money or do you, do you really see yourself going back to school and finishing to get your degree? So it was a, it was a huge decision. And uh, I almost had to convince my family to get on board. I was like, are you, are you guys serious right now? What do you mean? What do you mean? What'd you tell your family that, you know, um, it's tough. I mean, it definitely, yeah, I, I basically told him like, "Hey, I'm out of here. I'm not. I'm not coming back." <laughs> hey, is there a re- is there a restriction on how long a player can remain at each level before they must move up or out? Mm, not that I've ever heard. Yeah, I know guys go to. Uh, there's one person I played with. He got to double leg pretty quick, and that was it. And no matter how well he played, it was uh, someone always got above him. There was always someone that jumped in. So that's the thing, too, is that's great if you have a decent ear, but if they don't see anything flashy of, you know, at the next level, then you'll just be a spot filler. Now, in the minor leagues, you can't demand a trade, can you? No. You can't demand – anything <laughs> okay i didn't think so uh no but okay so i was traded uh i was traded for kurt suzuki in 2013 my first full season mm-hmm. and uh it was one of those things i had no idea uh, i got called in the office and they started messing with me and i was like okay what's really going on here and they're like well the nationals really like you and you were just traded for uh kurt suzuki i go okay what does that mean <laughs> like what do i do You'll get a phone call here soon. I was like, okay, am I like going to the big leagues or something? No, I just went. All I did was go to low A for whoever the Nationals or for the Nationals at that time. So the minor league side of it's a little little different. There's Yeah, there's no demands. Yeah, that's tough. How does the Rule 5 draft work? Uh, that would be – so a college player would be your – Fourth year, fifth year, high school, it's your sixth or seventh year. And uh, I ended up getting passed up my rule five year, which I was I was kind of upset just because of the season that I had. I went from high A to triple A, and a lot of guys normally don't do that. Mm-hmm. And I had a really good year, a, a fairly decent year anyways. And then I went to the fall league and had a – fairly good fall league, but I just wasn't very, I wasn't throwing very hard. 90-92 and uh, didn't happen. But I know plenty of guys that get picked up in that and it could be bittersweet. It could be good. It could be, it could be bad. I know a buddy who was with us um, 
and then he got rule five by the Cleveland Indians, played with them for one year, and then he ended up getting hurt, and then he ended up coming back halfway through the season, but then they got rid of him. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's – you uh, you build a relationship with the organization, um, not just the players, but, like, the coaching staff. So, you know, guys that stay – the coaches that stick around, managers, um, you know, hitting coaches, whatever, whatever have you. And, uh, like, for example, I talked about it uh, about a week ago to my grandparents. I was like, you know, I, I signed back with the Nationals because I feel like it's family. Uh, one of the strength coaches I've been around for – seven eight years i watched his i watched his son grow up and then we're we're all pretty close so you build that relationship and which was another reason i wanted to sign back for the nationals since my seven-year minor league contract was up two years ago yeah so adam any questions armand yeah i got i got one that's just kind of totally random but um What's the hardest place to pitch in, whether it was your triple-A experience or double-A? <laughs> Everywhere in the PCL. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and the thing is, is I'm not, not the only person to say that. Every, every pitcher said it, especially this year just because uh, they, changed, they changed the triple-A baseballs to big league balls. And, mm. yes, those things go a lot further than my league balls. <laughs> And uh, the elevation wasn't the best. When you were playing in Albuquerque, you were playing in Salt Lake City, the ball absolutely flies. Holy smokes. <laughs> so routine pop-ups are home runs. But, yeah, anywhere, wow. anywhere in the PCL. <laughs> now, because you probably noticed now that Wichita got the new AAA team from New Orleans where the Wichita went surge now. Explain to fans, because we used to have AAA, AA, everything, and it just didn't work out. And, mm-hmm. and we got an independent league, which just wasn't the same for me. Yeah. Explain to fans what they have to look forward to with a AAA team coming to town. So I are they going to keep the name Baby Cakes? No. They, no they're, they're, they're not? No. That's kind of a buzzkill. I love that. It's kind of funny. Uh, all the um, surge, and they, they, they have a pretty new new little stadium. I toured the place about a month ago before everything all shut down. It's, it's okay. a nice little place. That uh, which I, I was about. hoping for the patty cakes, personally. <laughs> um, no, they have – I'm telling you, you, you guys all have something to look forward to. That That's a fun team to watch. I know Asan Diaz was there. Uh, I know he played majority of the year in the big leagues, but and they had – and oh, man, the location of the baby cakes, awful, absolutely awful. It's yeah. like 20 minutes away from downtown. No one wants to – like, no one wants to leave that. Like, what do you mean? Right. <laughs> so – And our new um, scene is right in the middle of that, the heart of downtown, which is nice. There you go, which is exactly how Oklahoma City does it. And they draw right. – 15, 20 at least, mm-hmm. and without a doubt. Um, no, I mean, if you don't catch a game, I'm telling you, you're, you're doing something wrong with your summer. I know it's hot, and I know it's very hot, <laughs> but I would do it. I'll do it. Awesome. Who had the it? most annoying fans? Most annoying fans. <laughs> Holy cow. Um... <laughs> I would say Kannapolis. Um, was that Maryland? Right? That was the – Is it North Carolina or Kannapolis? Low for the White Sox? I have no idea. <laughs> low, a, low A for the White Sox? Um, I had like a – I had my jersey just unbuttoned just a little bit, and they're sitting there yelling, uh, you know, what are you doing out there? Are you posing for Playgirl? You, you see like my <laughs> chest hair a little bit. <laughs> and it's like seven seven grown men on oh the third gosh. base side. I'm like, are you kidding me? It was it was for a solid, and they were like the only ones there, so <laughs> they were very loud. Hey, hey, any interesting, interesting stories you, when you played summer ball when you were at college, where Eddie didn't stay or because uh, Wichita's 
host the NBC World Series during the month of late July and August. Any any experience uh, with your with summer ball? Um, so summer ball, I went to the Northwoods League. Honestly, and I don't know if there's any college players going to listen to this, and if you are, you need to listen that. The Northwoods League gets you more ready for professional baseball than I feel any other league. You play, what is it, 72 games in 76 days? That's that's <laughs> minor league baseball yeah. to a T, man, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. Stories-wise, <laughs> I have one from, uh, from Loa from Beloit, Wisconsin. Go ahead, man. So – I mean, the best way to describe it is Google – I'm surprised no one told you. Google White Wall Ninja and see what pops up. Google White Wall Ninja, and, yes, that is me standing in the background of a baseball game up against the advertisements on the wall <laughs> while the game is going on. And I ended up getting from, like, left field to, like, left center before the umpires actually noticed I was there. <laughs> and no, I was not supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, that's so so yep. someone photoshopped that into Nationals Park, but the real photo is up against a, a white fence in Beloit, Wisconsin. <laughs> and, you got uh, it right there. <laughs> I see it. Yeah, I see yeah, it. Sure. <laughs> so, it's, oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th- that was in the middle of the game. I was out there for like I was out there for like two innings. <laughs> and, uh, and then t- yeah. Two innings before umpires noticed. I mean there was a bunch of stuff that happened in the middle of it. What did yeah, your coach say? Their pitching that? coach yelling at <laughs> he's the one that told me to do it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was like, this is great. Silly. I'll do it. So but yeah, that's about it. And it's kind of crazy how that went viral pretty quick. And, and um, even like other teams, well, as we're stretching before the game starts and stuff, they're over there like, "Hey man, are you are you the white wall ninja?" I'm like, "Yeah man, is, oh, let's man. not get into this." But yeah. <laughs> hey Dakota, I had a question for you. This this is my son Cannon, and uh, he's starting hey. baseball and. Uh, just some advice for him as he's growing up uh, in baseball and learning the game. He's a second grader right now. And, you know, just some advice for him of what, what you think would, would help him out. For have, the obviously have as much fun as possible. Um, and swing as hard as you possibly can and throw as hard as you possibly can. <laughs> no, um, honestly, uh, the game hasn't changed at that level. So have as much fun as possible. Play as many positions as you want. Enjoy the Gatorade and the snacks afterwards because we yeah. all enjoyed it when we played. Just just don't worry about anything and have fun. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Dakota, for being on today. We appreciate it. We wish you guys the yeah. best of luck, and we hope that baseball gets back into action here soon and all this stuff just goes downhill. So. Okay, we hope to see yeah. you here in Wichita too. I want yeah, to thank. Well, I appreciate it. I want to thank your buddy Matt Moore for getting you on the show. He said that. Mm-hmm. By the way, he wanted me to tell you that he's the fastest human being you ever met before <laughs> you guys started playing. So. He told me to call Whatever. you out on that. So he's he's the worst. So. <laughs> All right, Dakota. We appreciate it. We hope you have a yeah great career the rest of your career and we hope to see you with the nationals armand's a big nationals fan so he hopes to see all right. you all right i appreciate it guys thank you. take care yeah, right. thanks, thank you, you. thank you right, buddy. thanks bye right, everybody one. that's gonna do it for our show today we want to thank dakota for being on go ahead and hit the like button subscribe the more subscribers the better we are starting to get more guests on the show we will have Marcus McDuffie on our next show, Wichita State Standout. And we're shot, baby. Yeah, yeah. We're shot. <laughs> There's Chase with the hat. So we will see you guys later and hope you have a good day. Thank you.